Hello, my name is Brandon Enright, and today I would like to show how to decode the combination on a master dial combination. And it also works, so it works on the larger one and the smaller one, though there are some subtle differences. I'm going to make this a multi-part video, and in this first part, I'm just going to talk about the, the basic strategy, how the lock works, and I'm not going to go into any real detail about the, the specific uh, details of, of how to get each one of the numbers and, and how to do the field, because that's going to, I'm going to do that in the later videos where I can provide a little bit more depth. So first I just want to show how this lock works. And I took one apart, and you can see there's a, a shackle retention clip that goes there that always falls out. Um, and then there are three discs. One disc is attached to the dial, and then the other two discs um, connect to the, you know, they, they interact with this little bump. And then of course these two discs also have little bumps on them so that you can see, and then the bumps will catch and that's how they carry each other around. So this disc corresponds to the third number in the combination. And then this, this middle disc is the second number and then this top disc is the last number. So the general, so let me show how the lock works first. And so the, it comes with the combination, in this case, 30, 36, 10. So you turn clockwise several times until all the discs have caught each other. And you go to the first number, which is in this case is 30. You go around back to 30. You go to the second number, which in this case is 36. And then you go back to 10. And when you've done all that, the, all the grooves on all those discs will have aligned and the lock will pop open. You can see what happens when all the grooves are aligned. I'm just gonna show the single groove here on the last number, but when you pull up on the shackle here, here, let me see if I can get better light. There we go. It'll fall into that groove and then this lock will pop open, which I need to be careful about because there we go. Okay, we popped it open and then I can reset it like that. Okay. So all we're doing when we're, when we're dialing the combination is we're getting all of those three aligned so that this thing can fall down in. So the general strategy for decoding this lock is to exploit some flaws of the lock to find the first number and the last number. The middle number you can't really easily determine so you just end up brute forcing it. Um, so the first number, the, the way you get it is, is you pull up on the shackle slightly and you wait, you find the, the, the number that's catching as you turn the dial around in a circle, which in this case is 25 and, or 24. And you add five to that and you get the first number, which in, we already know is 30 because of the combination. Then the second, and so the reason that works, and I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here, but the reason that works is that there's a flaw where the shackle retention clip right here can when, pull, when you pull up on the shackle, it interacts with that bump, catches on it, and you can feel where that bump is. And that bump is always offset by five when you're turning clockwise. It's always offset by five from the right number. So that's why you can determine the first number. Now, the second, the, or excuse me, the last number that you can determine, you can also determine the last number directly. And you can just do that by pulling up and feeling these gates. And so there's one correct gate, which is wider than all the others, and then there's 11 false gates. And you can pull up and you can feel those gates and find the one that's the widest. And that'll determine the last number. So once you have the first and the last number, you simply brute force the middle number. Um, now, there's some rules for the first and the last number. So the first, middle, and last number all relate to each other. Um, and that really simplifies Anytime there's like anytime you're not exactly sure if you're on the right number or not, it really simplifies it if you know the rules. So the first number and the last number are always some multiple four off of each other, including uh, zero times four, right? So so if the first number is a twenty, then the last number can be either a twenty or a twenty-four or a twenty-eight or a thirty-two or a thirty-six or a forty, which is the same as zero, or a four or an eight or a twelve or a sixteen, and then back to twenty, right? And then so the first and third number are always a multiple four off from each other. The second number is always some multiple four plus two off. So if the first number was a 20, then the second number can be a 22 or a 26 or a 30 or a 34 or a 38 or a 42, which is the same as two or a six or a 10 or a 14 or an 18 and then we're back around to 20. Right, so the first number and last number are always multiples of four off from each other. 
the second number is always some multiple of 4 plus 2 off from each other, including 0 times 4, right? So it can only just be off by 2. It, it, that's also a possibility. And so when you, you first determine the first number, then determine the last number, and then you just brute force the middle number using the rule of offset by 2 plus, plus 4. And so let's say we've determined, and I'll just show it to you here, we've determined the first number is 30 and the last number is 10, okay? We're going to brute force that the middle number is 36. It's really simple. So you go to, you, you turn clockwise, you go to 30, you go back around to 30. Okay, so now we're going to offset by 2. This is our first middle number try. We're going to try 32. And then we go around to 10, pull up. Nope, didn't work. Then we go back to 36, which is 4 offset of the last try. And then we go around to 10, and we are open. Right? So that's how you brute force the middle number. So that's sort of the technique in a nutshell. And in my next video, I'm going to show in detail exactly how to feel that first number reliably. Um, and it'll work even on these smaller ones, which are, have a much more subtle feel. Um, so I will show that in the next video.